Well, historically, some of the greatest fortunes in this nation's history have been made by investing in commercial real estate. We'll talk to a leading national expert next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, when most people think about investing, they think about Wall Street, they think about the stock market, they think about traditional stocks uh, like AT&T and Apple. But with the stock market being so flaky, a lot of money is now moving into investing in real estate. To talk about that today, Stephen Patterson. He is the in Director of uh, Investor Relations at Key City Capital. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this. I, when I said it in the tease, some of the greatest fortunes ever made were in real estate. That's true, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, if you look at the people that built this country, you know, whether it was the Carnegie's or the Vanderbilt's uh, or the J.P. Morgan Chase's of the world, right? Uh, those men had business ownerships. They had public company interests, but their wealth was created in real estate. Yes, and everybody is talking about a possible downturn next year. Does that create some incredible opportunities for your clients? Absolutely. Um, you know, we've seen about a 25% market correction this year. I think that there's no question next week we see another half point for Jerome Powell. I think there's another 15% or more uh, based off of what I think projected Q4 earnings are going to be. And so all, the alternative space for the retail client is really robust right now. Yes, and, and your company has a great national reputation. In fact, when the media needs an expert, they often turn to your company. You were recently interviewed uh, on a, a several radio stations. Let's roll that clip. Need to know is the program. It has happened. Our Fed has raised interest rates three quarters of a percentage point. And in doing so, the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, says, yes, there will be pain. Let's talk about the implications of the interest rate hike on you. With Stephen Patterson, he is a financial strategist with Key City Capital. Stephen, welcome to Iowa Radio. Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? Good, 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 good. Now, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, of course, like everybody else is, what this interest rate hike means to my bank account, Steve, and what do you what do you think the big effects are of this? You know, it's it's going to hit uh, the average consumer in two ways. You know, one, when you go to borrow to buy a home or a car or even use your credit card, the interest rate's going to be considerably elevated from where it was a year ago. The second place that it's going to hit the average American is in the stock market. Mm -hmm. So you're not only going to pay more for goods and services, but you're going to see your 401k deflate significantly, as you're seeing again this morning. I love that. You've been very busy. What's your record for most interviews in a single day? Oh, goodness. I, I think we were up to eight last week. Wow. So. That's, that's incredible. Um, that's that's got to feel good. And I think part of the DNA of your company is educating people, right? Absolutely. You know, uh, I think Warren Buffett has a, a great quote that we use often with our clients, and it's don't invest in things that you don't understand. And I think that when we add that educational component to why people should look in this space, uh, it just begins to make sense. So uh, I know a lot of people watch these shows on TV, like Million Dollar Listing, and they say, man, real estate investing, that's easy. Anybody can do it. Uh, why would you want to use a firm like yours rather than uh, do it yourself? You know, our chief acquisitions officer, Lee Archer, has a great quote, and he says, everybody wants to be a real estate investor until it's time to be a real estate investor. You know, the 2 a.m. phone call that the toilet doesn't flush or that the hot water won't come on, you know, that's an active investment role. Uh, where we specialize is the passive real estate investment role, um, where we're managing the part, the, uh, the property, we're uh, doing the construction piece, we're dealing with subs that may not show up on time, right? And uh, it essentially turns into a situation for our clients 
uh, where it's the proverbial mailbox money, if you will. You know, rent's due on the first and we pay out on a monthly basis. Yes, and you do have some, uh, some dinners that you hold frequently to introduce ideas to your clients. We've got some video that, uh, this, I think this was uh, a couple of years ago, but tell us what happens at these investment dinners. Sure, um, they're really a learning opportunity. Uh, we will advertise uh, what we're doing. Um, we work with accredited investors only, and we begin to educate them on the opportunities that we bring to the table. Uh, and specifically in the real estate space, and, and in, we have some other niche uh, programs in the asset-backed lending space. So um, through that educational process, it gives the prospective client the opportunity to not only learn what we're doing, but to set up a follow-up meeting one-on-one -on -one where we can talk about the specifics of their needs and their portfolio because it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Sure. Well, there's always risk when you're investing in anything. What do you guys do to reduce the risk for your clients? You know, um, after 14 years of functioning in this space, you know, we've learned a lot. And, and through those lessons, we're able to provide a great value. Um, we have mitigated um, a number of risks just through our banking relationships in the space of knowing which lenders and what type of terms in the financing we want to work with. And then I think the third piece is, is that we're buying cash flowing assets uh, that we can model out on day one uh, to understand not only the returns, but what the potential upside appreciation is. And so as we look into next year, if we do get some turbulence in the economy, do you see uh, some property owners uh, being in a position where they have to sell properties? I do. I think that there are individuals out there that probably did interest only financing and those notes are going to come due. And when they do, they're no longer looking at three and a half to four and a half percent commercial paper. They're going to look at seven percent or more. Um, that's why we like to sit in a position where we can take advantage of those opportunities when they come about. It's also why we're really diligent in the type of financing we use on our own assets. Yeah, I've talked to so many people who I, I think back on 2008 when the the housing bubble was bursting, uh, they got some incredible deals, didn't they? Absolutely. Uh, you know, there was a number of millionaires born during that time. Now, there were some people that clearly got hurt during that time. But if you had the capacity and you had the foresight uh, to understand what those markets were going to do, uh, there was a, always an opportunity there. And that's how I view the next six months to a year uh, in the commercial space, for sure. Yeah, one of the things that really impresses me about your company is uh, your philanthropy. And I, I found a, a great video uh, of uh, a charity golf tournament that you guys do. Tell us more about that. You know, this was kind of the vision of our CEO and his wife, uh, Ty and Kara Lassiter. Um, we host this type of an event uh, and we raise charity around uh, a specific top topic. Uh, typically, it's around uh, the Embrace Grace um, charity. Uh, that works with uh, single or unwed mothers in uh, providing the assistance they need uh, to raise their child. And um, our donations went to that. We've also uh, sponsored um, a, a, an individual that we have a unique relationship with that was doing Ukrainian relief uh, during that invasion time. Um, and so we're looking for those opportunities to make a difference in someone's life uh, that needs help. And it's with that philanthropic heart that that golf tournament uh, was created, and it's been very successful. Yeah, uh, a company is only as good as its leaders. Tell us about uh, Ty and his wife. You know, Ty is a, a, a remarkable visionary. Um, you know, he's often will have conversations around, you know, an opportunity, uh, and as he likes to say, uh, I'm the cautious one in it, and I, I say, you know, I'll question Ty. You know, is this really the right path? And you know, he can lay out all the reasons why. And, you know, frankly, it's why uh, we've been successful. He, he's excellent at calculating that risk uh, versus what the reward is and mitigating uh, any downside. Sure. So there's going to be people watching this who uh, are now very interested. What, is it, what does it look like? Does somebody call you and, and is there, there's no obligation to sit down with? No, it's, uh, you know, I would, I would direct them to our website first, you know, mm -hmm. www.keycitycapital.com. There's an opportunity there to schedule a meeting, either in person, virtually, or by phone. And we'll dive into the specific needs of that client and how to position what it is we do in their portfolio for the greatest good. Outstanding. You've been an amazing guest. We're going to have to have you back again soon. Uh, let's going to put the website up to end this segment, uh, keycitycapital.com. Uh, the great Stephen Patterson. Thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> That's it for now. We'll see you next time.